Hello and thank you very much for joining me in the studio in South Wales, UK. My name is Clive from Clive Five Art, and I'm bringing you a wonderful painting today. And guess what? We've actually been locked down for another three weeks here due to the COVID-19 outbreak. But that's not a bad thing. It's not. Because guess what? We've got all this time on our hands now. We can sit back, we can relax, and we can paint away that stress of everyday life. We can cook, we can do decorating, we can do anything we want. We've got the freedom to do that. So hold on to that. Use it to your advantage, is what I say. But I want to say thank you to the NHS and all the other key workers out there and the bin men and the people that work in the, um, the, the shops, you know, that's providing us with the food and everybody else doing those, that bit. It's, I want to say a big, big thank you um, to everybody. So without further ado, I want to think about my mental health tonight because I think that is important. So I'll be talking a little bit about that during the video. But the main key to this is to sit back and relax and just listen to some music and just paint away that stress of everyday life that this COVID-19 can bring to us. So without further ado, let's have a look at the palette and see what colours I'm going to be using this evening. See, I got a little bit of burnt umber, I got some mid yellow and I got some Naples yellow, some white I got a little bit of purple there that I mixed up earlier, um, some Mars black, some red and some ultramarine blue. That's all the colours that we're going to be using in this painting today. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we can get painted this afternoon or this evening or this morning, wherever you are. <laughs> so let's start the day. I was thought we just very quickly just draw a quick line across, doesn't have to be dead accurate. Let's get a little pencil and just draw a line there. And let's bring a line out from the center to the corner like that. And then let's just bring this other line just on a slight angle like this. See a curving and bringing that out. Bringing that right out. There, like that. Let's just put a little bit of a bend in that one. There we go. So all we need to do, because we're going to do something with perspective today. We're going to do something with perspective today, as you can see. So we need we need to make it look like as if it's just disappearing into the distance there, maybe. So we can play around with that. We we'll maybe put a couple of little mountains in or something. But we'll we'll play with this now. As we go along that's all you need to do so without further ado let's get on to this wonderful painting just going to be a bit of picking up a little bit of just getting a little bit of white and some ultramarine blue and let's just paint this sky in I'm trying to relax and Put all your worries behind you. It doesn't have to be related to the COVID-19, but we've all got enough stress and troubles that go on in everyday life. The most important thing is our mental health. It's as important as our diet and our health as far as exercise or just having basic movement in your day because it's so easy just to stay in bed and throw that duvet cover over your head in the morning and think oh well it's just another day I've got loads of these ahead but we're doing a very strong thing we're doing a very brave thing by listening to our governments and staying at home and staying indoors and protecting your health workers, saving lives. We're doing a very important job, so don't ever forget that. We've got an opportunity to 
to learn new skills and if painting is one of those things that we can do and it can make us a much better person I'm hoping that after this epidemic pandemic or whatever you want to call it is over I'm certainly going to be coming out of this as a stronger more humble type of person and I'm hoping that in some small way that these paintings and these lessons that I'm doing can can help others follow me down on that road to the end which is what I'm painting today the long winding winding road that we've got to we got to go down My main concern is um, sometimes extreme anxiety can strike when you're least expecting it. I know it has done for me over several years because I lost my mother a few years ago and experienced something that I've never experienced in my lifetime, which was anxiety and panic attacks. Panic attacks can be triggered either by something in your in your mind, such as a memory or perception, or something in your environment, like the COVID-19 outbreak. You're feeling threatened or you're feeling real danger. Or it could be even something that you perceive before you consciously notice it. It could be a smell. It could be as something as simple as a sound. So you might start panicking before you're even consciously aware or even understanding what's triggered you. Typically symptoms of a panic attack include, but they're not limited to panting. You're feeling that you're not able to breathe you can get numbness in your face, in your limbs, tingling in your hands or your feet. You get that feeling of unreality. You, get fe you feel a bit sick or you can actually vomit. Or you just need to get out of that place very quickly to escape that overwhelming sense of dread or overpowering fear. You could be sweating. You can have hot sweats, or even cold sweats. You get clammy hands, maybe clammy skin. You can have a dry mouth. Or in my case, I go to the toilet a lot. <laughs> or actually doing that, or you get this blankness feeling, this, you're, you're being un unable to think, unable to... To, to think clearly. Panic attacks can come in waves. If you experience one, you may experience several in close proximity to itself. And this can be very distressing, very distressing. The most I've ever seen a person have is three, one directly after another, which was my stepson, Mark. I panicked because he was panicking. And that's another thing that it tends to do. You can panic because you are panicking. And the more you panic, the more you panic. What a vicious circle. So what I'm trying to do today is to make you aware if you're not already aware of what panic can do, anxiety as an issue. You may have experienced some of the symptoms that I've mentioned and not aware that you've even had a panic attack. And due to this time of this epidemic, it's important that we try to be mindful because if we understand the triggers 
something can get us going. We can deal with those triggers and make it easier. So the only way to deal with panic is to learn to nip it in the bud. You need to recognize those triggers, try to avoid them or handle them effectively. So what I wanted to do after you finish watching me paint is maybe later on, tomorrow, even in a few days time, there's no rush, is to jot down the things that you've noticed that may have triggered that panic attack. It could be strobe lights or a taste of a particular food it could be the fact that we just lock down because you're so used to getting outside and getting on about your your daily life it could be the fact that you're just stuck at home and you want to get to work it could even be before the outbreak when maybe a crowded train or a load no a load noise or even a certain type of dog that could have set you off. Panic attacks can last for years. We never really get to grips with them. What we do is learn to manage them. So what I'm trying to say is, learning those triggers are as important as part of conquering your panic. I've got a mortal fear of spiders, at least I had, until I confronted those fears of spiders. And over several years, I'm more tolerant don't get me wrong, I don't like spiders. But I don't jump out of my skin when I see one now. So when you're having a panic attack, you might feel a tightness in your chest, a shortness of breath. But the most important thing you can do is breathe. Because you might think that you can't breathe, but trust me, you can. So slowing down the breath, counting a breath on the intake to four and the outtake or the out breath to four and keeping that four in and four out and four in and four out. It's called rhythmic breathing, which will help to calm, lower your heart rate and stop that feeling that you can't breathe. Tell yourself, we will survive. You will survive. It's just fear. Just a feeling and it will pass. The only fear is fear itself. And when we confront that, it doesn't look so bad or feel so bad. So understanding your triggers and learning to handle your panic if you get an attack will take you much further 
and will be much more effective in breaking the cycle of escalation that that panic can bring. Anxiety and panic are long-term things, so we need to live with them. It's a little bit like this COVID-19 virus. It's not going to disappear in weeks. We need to learn to live with it. We need to learn to change our behaviors. We also need to understand what effect it can have on our day-to-day -day lives now. If it makes us better, more caring, more humble human beings, then maybe it's not such a bad thing. Although the price of human life is great. Because at the end of the day, we are fighting the war. We are fighting a war of an invisible enemy. And my heart goes out to everybody that has lost or will lose loved ones to this nasty virus. And my heart also goes out and my thanks go out to those people that are doing so much on a day-to-day -day basis to save lives. And that includes you to stay in home. So if you've never had a panic attack before, it can take you by surprise. In fact, even if you've had a hundred, they can still be very, very terrifying. So my advice is to, to use a few tips when dealing with anxiety. Because anxiety is the fear of the future. Whereas depression is more about the fear of the past, the loss of a loved one, etc. Because we are living in an unsure time, none of us knows what's ahead. None of us knows when things will sort of resume back to normal. This that's where anxiety is going to grab you hard and try and destroy you. But if you understand how to deal with this, then we can just push through and say, hey, it's another day tomorrow. <laughs> so you need to familiarize yourself if you can, with your usual symptoms that signal that attack. The more you understand the triggers, the better prepared you're going to be. Understand that you are safe, even though you're feeling a bit, a little bit panicky. In reality, you're really safe, and there is no need to be frightened. You won't die, even if you feel terrified. So accept that. When you get that shortness of breath and the sweats, and you start to panic, your heart is pounding out of your chest, which I've had. You must understand that you're not going to die. Just use that simple breathing technique, like I said, and try and calm yourself down. 
breathe, concentrate on that breathing. Blow out slowly, then breathe in and blow out again. Count to 10 if that helps several times. Breathe in deeper each time, but try not to hyperventilate. Slow the breathing down and breathe in a more shallow way. We start feeling a little bit dizzy or lightheaded. Just slow the breathing down. And guess what? Stand up. If you're sitting or if you're standing, stamp them feet hard on the ground. Don't hurt yourself, but just feel how solid the flow is. Look around you. What environment are you in? Are you home? Are you surrounded by family that love you? You're not going to die. You can hold something like an arm of a chair or a banister or even your own hand. Give your partner a hug. Feel the security. Tell yourself, I can do this. I can get through this. It is going to pass. And I am going to be better for it. If your feelings still continue, then try singing a song. We're all told during this pandemic to sing happy birthday twice while we wash our hands. So why not sing happy birthday if you're having a panic attack? Take a walk. Even if it's to the bottom of the garden and back. Continue with that breathing. Deep, deep breathing. Stretch. Make a fist. Make a hand and stretch those fingers. Crunch your toes and spread them out. Even try having a laugh. Laughter at the end of the day can heal a lot of wounds. Ellen Keller said that we could never learn to be brave and patient if there are only joy in the world. Painting is a wonderful way to de-stress, to learn a new skill. Exercise also uh, is recognized as a huge distresser and it re releases the the feel-good endorphins into our brains and bodies helping us feel a whole lot better diet is another thing it all depends on how much caffeine and alcohol some nicotine even sugar we either consume will affect how calm or wired we are we all know that a, a cup of strong coffee can get us up and go in in the morning, but it can only it can also work to our disadvantage by wiring us up if we've had a glass too much or a, a cup too much before we go to bed. 
alcohol is the same. It can relax us or it can depress us. What I'm saying to you today, to you today is there's a lot of things that you can do to help yourself. We can explore this on other lessons if you want. The most important thing is to relieve that stress of everyday life and just paint away with me here in Wales. Again, a big thank you to all those people that have working hard in the care industry and the hospitals and shops and all the all the bin men and everybody that's keeping the countries going. Here we go. I just made another mistake. But hey, it's only a painting at the end of the day. Keep calm and carry on. We will get to the end of the road. Just put some final details in now. And thank you for joining me. Seeing I made a few mistakes there just towards the end, but what I want to try and say is don't worry about that. Just try and rectify it. That's the most important thing because we all tend to rush things a little bit and I was trying to rush that towards the end and that's what happens. Take your time. The most important thing you can do when you're doing paintings like this, even quick little study paintings like this, is take your time. Don't rush it or you'll be making mistakes and... Before you know it, you will ruin that. So anyway, there's another quick little lesson for you. I hope you enjoy that and join me again uh, next Friday where we'll be relaxing away the stress of everyday life with this COVID-19 virus. <laughs> Take care. Bye.